Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes, and we call each and one of our Tuesday broadcasts by this title. We call that our Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract and Truth. The word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and it's the word describing an evangelism tool. It's a gospel tract, and I'm going to talk about a gospel tract here in a moment and be encouraging you to get from us a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracts. But the word truth refers to the gospel truth. Now, if you listen every day, you know that right now we are in a study of 2 Peter, but on our Tuesday broadcast, our Tract and Truth Tuesdays, we typically set aside our walk through the book that we're dealing with to focus on the gospel, and that's our goal today. Right now, my Bible's sitting open to Isaiah chapter 53, and I'm going to be reading verses 5 and 6 here in a moment. If you've never memorized Isaiah 53, 6, I would really strongly encourage you to do that. Isaiah 53 verses 5 and 6 will be our focus today. You will need a piece of paper and a pen to jot down some notes today. Please have that ready. Let me begin this way. Are you familiar with the term the Jerusalem Road? The Jerusalem Road. Let me ask you, do you know what the Romans road is? The Romans road is a way to share the gospel from the book of Romans. Well, the Jerusalem road is a way to share the gospel with a Jewish person. The other day, somebody asked me about sharing the gospel with a Jewish person. And my first question to them was to find out whether the Jewish friend that they were dealing with was an observing Jew or just a cultural one. And it turned out that their friend, did attend synagogue about once a month, but they did it primarily to please a grandparent. The person asking me wanted to know if I had ever led a Jewish person to Christ, and my answer is no. I've talked to a handful of Jewish people in sharing the gospel over the years, but I've never seen one through my own personal witness receive Jesus as their Savior. Now, what we did at that point with my friend who asked me the question was we began to lay out a way of sharing the gospel using the Old Testament because that's what the Jewish people lean on. I learned the approach I'm going to share with you today some years ago from a Jewish man who serves in the ministry called Friends of Israel. I learned it. It's been effective. I want to pass it on to you. Again, you're going to need that pen and paper today. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. I have one of our gospel tracts in my hand. This one's entitled, What God Wants Everyone to Know. What God Wants Everyone to Know. I selected this one for today's broadcast simply because this gospel tract starts off with the expectation that the person reading it has virtually no background in the Bible. They may have never gone to church, never went to Sunday school, never went to vacation Bible school. We're starting at square zero. And what does God want everybody to know? This gospel tool lays out the gospel starting from where that person is at. It begins by asking this question and answering it, who is God? Then it asks, where did we come from? And it goes on from there. We meet people, you and I who know Christ, we meet people who are starting out at all kinds of different levels as far as what they know spiritually about the Bible. We've got to be prepared to have tools 
to share with people who know nothing about God's Word. This is a great tool, what God wants everyone to know. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer will share with you our contact information. Please be ready. Jot it down. Ask for our sample packet. We'll need your name and address to give it to you, but ask for the sample packet. It contains over 40 gospel tracts, each one clearly laying out the gospel, each one coming at the gospel message from a little different window of approach. We want to give it to you. Let me become a partner with you in the gospel. This track, What God Wants Everyone to Know, will be an effective help for you. Let's begin here today with my Bible open to Isaiah 53. Listen to verses 5 and 6. They say this, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When I was in Bible college one year, I worked for a car dealership and I cleaned cars and did other jobs that basically required a strong back and a weak mind. My boss was a Jewish man who just loved to ridicule all religions and by the way, including Judaism. One day, though, he let me sit down and go through the gospel with him. He politely listened, but he seemed totally untouched by the truth, at least that day. But I don't know of any day that he received the gospel as his Savior. The approach I used then is what I want to share with you now. It's called the Jerusalem Road. It uses the Old Testament. There are five steps in the Jerusalem Road. Step number one is this. There is no one who is not a sinner. There's no one who is not a sinner. You're familiar with the fact that all we, like sheep, have gone astray out of Isaiah chapter 53. But listen to this verse. Jot this reference down. Isaiah 14 verse 3 says this. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That's Psalm 14.3. I like Psalm 14.3 to deal with the issue that there is no one who is not a sinner. We're all sinners for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's step one. Step two in the Jerusalem road is this. Good deeds cannot make me pure. Good deeds cannot make me pure. This verse is familiar probably to many of you. It comes out of the book of Isaiah, but chapter 64 and verse 6. Isaiah 64, verse 6, and it reads like this. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We all do fade as the leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. That was Isaiah 64, verse 6. The third step in sharing the gospel from the Old Testament is this. God requires a blood sacrifice to pay for sin. God requires a blood sacrifice. Here's the verse off. I say the reference, which is Leviticus 17, 11, that may not ring a bell with you, but I'm sure that once I begin to read it to you, it'll be familiar. Leviticus 17, 11 says this, the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. In talking with a Jewish person, even a cultural one, they know about the sacrificial system and they know about the blood sacrifice and the animal sacrifices, and they've heard the word atonement before. God requires blood to make an atonement. Step four in the Jerusalem road to share the gospel is this. The atoning blood must be applied to be effective. The atoning blood must be applied to be effective. That day, sharing the gospel with my Jewish boss, who frankly ridiculed all religions, I started with the Passover story found in Exodus chapter 12. He knew the story and knew that the Jews had to put the blood on the doorpost for the death angel to pass over. He didn't believe the story, but he knew the story. 
I then went and talked about how on the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament, in Leviticus 16, once a year the high priest went into the Holy of Holies and the blood had to be applied to the mercy seat. And again, my boss, my Jewish boss, who was really not religious, he knew enough about the Old Testament Judaism to know about the Day of Atonement. But that's when I used Isaiah 53, verse 5, that I read a moment ago. I said that Messiah would come to give his blood for sinners. Again, Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The fifth step in sharing the gospel from the Old Testament, the fifth step of the Jerusalem road is this. Safety and refuge was to be found in Messiah. Safety and refuge was to be found with Messiah, but who is he? Who is the Messiah? How will we know who Messiah is? When I walk through this step, I share four things. Number one, I share that Messiah would be born of a virgin. You're familiar with the Christmas story and out of Isaiah 7, verse 14, the Messiah would be born of a virgin. So that's how I would recognize him, number one. Number two, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Most Jewish people know about the Christmas story, how the wise men came and asked, where is he that is born the king of the Jews? And the Jewish leaders knew where he would be born. Micah 5 verse 2 says he would be born in Bethlehem. The third thing about Messiah, how we would recognize him is, based upon Isaiah 53, he would be slain for the sins of others. This is the step that really brings a wrinkle to the brow because how in the world will Messiah their king die. The last thing I say is this, Messiah won't stay dead. He will rise from the dead. And I share out of Psalm 16, verse 10, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell or in the grave, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And in the Jewish Old Testament, the word holy one is a very special term referring to Messiah. Now, in sharing the gospel with a Jewish person or anyone, frankly, that's coming from a different faith, you must be willing to do these five things. Are you ready? Number one, be very patient. Be very patient. Number two, be ready to explain the gospel many different times, many different ways, using many different illustrations. The person needs to be able to wrap their mind around a new concept called grace. Step number three is be very patient. Do you begin to see a pattern here? <laughs> you need to be patient. Number four, developing a friendship will be very helpful. You being a friend to them, let them, let them see your genuineness in your life. Step number five, be very patient. And then step number six is this, bathe that person in prayer. Pray that God would open their eyes to see the truth. You and I can give the greatest gospel presentation in all the world, but you and I cannot open the heart, cannot open the eyes, cannot open the understanding. That is the ministry of the Spirit of the living God. We must pray that God do that. Oh, friend, let's not be afraid to share the gospel. Even if we think we're doing a weak job at it, let's share the gospel with all that we can by the grace and mercy of God. Get the tracks from us. They'll help you extend your witness. May God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
www.ebenezerchurch.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.